in the heart of a village called Olomore. There lived a young couple named Damola and Femi. They were very much in love and they are happy together. But Damola was a woman who loved the finer things in life and wanted more than what the village had to offer. She began to spend lavishly on expensive clothes and jewelries, hoping to impress other women in the village. But her spending was bringing down her husband's income and savings. Femi tried to talk to Damola about how she's spending too much and how it is seriously affecting their income. But Damola refused to listen. She continued to spend extravagantly, not minding that this attitude of hers is already affecting her marriage to Femi. Meanwhile, Femi, on the other hand, is a shoemaker who owns a small shop where he sells the shoes he produced and made by himself. He's a very talented man. Why Damola is just a housewife who does nothing to contribute to the income of the family but knows how to spend. One fateful day, in their small apartment, Femi was revealing views why Damola, oblivious, scrolled through online stores. Her heart set on a pair of interland shoes and she went to show her husband Femi, which Femi is trying to tell her no. But Damola interrupted him and said to him, don't even start Femi. All my friends have these shoes and I want mine. Femi, with the weight of their unspoken debt, felt suffocating. But seeing his wife's face, his love silenced his worries. And he said to his wife, just promise you'll be very careful with the credit card. Damola, feigning innocence, said to his husband, me, I will be very careful. Always, you know. Femi knew she was pushing their limit. As a good man he is, he loves his wife blindly. And also the need for her to keep up appearances became an addiction. The next day, Damola visited Auntie Bomi, her wise and caring auntie, who lives a life of contentment. As they were discussing, Damola asked her, why does everyone want to have more? Auntie Bomi replied her, happiness doesn't come from designer labels. It comes from love, respect, and knowing your worth. Damola's heart prickled, and she said to herself, Was my auntie Bumi right? Weeks later, the credit card maxed out. Calls from debt collectors became a daily occurrence. Femi, his shoulders slumped in defeat, broke the news to his wife. Damola, we are bankrupt. She stared at her husband, the reality hitting her like a cold slap. Her shopping spree has brought them to their knees. The next day, Damola with her head hung low, entered into Mama Bisola's store, where they buy everyday essentials. Shame could not let her talk to Mama Bisola, but as she was stammering, she said to Mama Bisola about our bill. Mama Bisola cut her short with a worried face and said to her, My dear Damola, is everything all right? You haven't paid a month. I know. I'm so sorry. My husband's business is not doing well currently, Damola said. Mama Bisola replied her, Oh dear, that is terrible. You know Femi is a good man. He always pays on time. Damola said to her, stammering, of course, of course. It's just temporary setback. As Damola left her shop, the weight of the lie and her shame is crushing her. As she got home, an empty fridge is looking at her. No food in the kitchen. Damola wept and push aside her pride as Auntie Bumi's words 
a code in her head. Happiness comes from knowing your worth, she said to herself. As she thought hard what she can do to make money and help out at home, she decided to use ingredients borrowed from Mama Bisola, who readily understood their situation. Damola whipped a delicious meal. As Femi tested the food, he said to her, This is amazing! You should sell this! Femi planted a seed of possibility to his wife. With this newfound business idea, Damola sought for Auntie Bumi's advice. Together, they visited the bustling market in their village. Auntie Bumi was guiding her in the market because Damola had to start small. She told her to start with what she knew. You know that your cooking speaks for itself. Using their little savings that remained, Damola brought ingredients soon. The aroma of the delicious food started attracting curious neighbors. Word spread days after. Damola, proudly serving a plate of her food to a smiling customer. A small queue waiting outside her apartment door. Damola's home kitchen became a local sensation. Bimbo, her friend, is one of the first customers. Damola watched her with amusement as Bimbo devoured the food. Damola asked her, Are you enjoying it, Bimbo? She replied, Yes, yes, it's alright. For your home cooking, it's okay. Damola smiled with a sense of accomplishment. Weeks later, Femi was receiving a phone call. Surprise and joy on his face. That afternoon, Femi returned home and rushed to Damola and said to her, Guess what? I got a new contract to supply children years to a big store. Damola replied him, Oh, Femi, that's fantastic. They embraced each other, tears of relief and happiness were in their eyes. It was not just about the contract, it was about the unity and resilient. A phone call shattered their newfound joy, and Tibini had been rushed to the hospital, critically ill. Damola became scared and she started to panic because she knew they had no money for treatment. But Femi assured her and told her we will find a way. Don't worry. But Damola was very worried. She said to herself, What if I couldn't save my auntie? What if my past extravagant spending would cost me her dearly? Damola was scared. As Damola sat with Auntie Bumi at the hospital bed, her heart was heavy with guilt. The woman who had always been a pillar of strength and support now laying down fragile, her once vibrant eyes crowded with pain. Damola whispering to her to be me, telling her, Please forgive me. I was so foolish, so caught up in appearances that I almost lost everything. And Tibumi weakly said to her, My dear Damola, you have learned a valuable lesson. One's wealth lies not in material position, but in the love we share and the strength we build together. Damola said to her, I know, auntie, I know, but what if it is too late? Because we can't afford your treatment. Damola poured out her heart, confessing her reckless spending and how it ruined them financially. Tears welled up in Auntie Bumi's eyes. But not for the reason Damola expected. She said to her, Damola, my dear, there is something you need to know. Auntie Bumi reached out 
for a drawer beside her bed. Her trembling hand pulled out a worn-out envelope. Damola watched in confusion as Auntie Bomi handed her over the envelope. Inside it is a document. As Damola opened it, it was a life insurance policy, naming Damola as the beneficiary. Damola said to Auntie Bomi, I don't understand. Auntie Bumi replied her, I knew, darling, that life can be unpredictable, so I took precaution. This policy will cover your expenses, my treatment, and more. It is your chance to start afresh. Damola asked her, But why didn't you tell me? Auntie Bumi replied her, I wanted you to find your own strength, Damola. To learn the true value of things. And my dear, you have. Damola had relieved, followed by gratitude. And Tibumi, even in her illness, had been looking out for her. And it was a chance of redemption. Days turned into weeks. And Tibumi, thanks to the insurance, received the treatment she needed. Damola, with a renewed determination, expanded her home kitchen venture. Femi, back on his feet at his workshop, supported her every step of the way. Their tiny apartment now buzzed with activity. The aroma of the delicious food filled the air. A testament to Damola's talent and hard work. Bumi now humbled became a regular customer. Her designer bag, temporarily forgotten, as she devoured the simple joy of a home-cooked meal. Months later, at the bustling market, Damola stood with Femi, standing proudly in front of a newly opened store, with a sign reading Damola's Kitchen. Their home kitchen has blossomed into a thriving restaurant. Damola said to Femi, We did it. We did it together. As Femi was smiling, Damola glanced at a photo of Auntie Fumi displayed proudly on her shelf. The woman who had believed in her, even when she doubted herself. The journey had been tough, but it had brought them closer reminding them of what truly mattered and the lesson learned were priceless. Life seems to be settling into a comfortable reading. Damola's kitchen attracting customers from all corners. Femi and Damola's bond strengthened by their shared struggle. One afternoon, as Damola prepared a batch of her signature stew, the news report on the television shattered their newfound peace. The news anchor said, A fire has broken out at the Boslin Eco Market, causing a big damage. Emergency services are currently on the scene. Reports indicate that several shops have been destroyed and the cause of the fire is yet to be identified. Damola's heart was beating fast because a coal market is where her shop is located. She was panicking as she was rushing to the market. The Van Bright market, she knew, replaced by smoke, hanged heavy in the air. Her shop, once booming with fresh produce, was now reduced to ashes. Tears was flowing as Damola was looking at the damages. Her carefully built business, her livelihood, lay down there in ashes. Femi wrapped his arms around Damola, holding her from falling because she couldn't control herself. Femi said to her, Damola, we we'll figure it out. We can rebuild. But the fear in Femi mellowed her own. They had some savings from the restaurant, but it wouldn't be enough to start afresh especially with the insurance money already used for anti-bombing treatment. Just as despair threatened to consume them, a hand touched Damola's shoulder. 
his mama Bisola, her face with concern, stood beside them. She said to Damola, My dear, this is a terrible strategy, but you are not alone. Slowly, other familiar faces emerged from the crowd of the onlookers. Vendors, their customers, approached Damola and Femi. Words of support and offer of help flowed in. One of the vendors said to them, My brother owns a carpentry shop. He can help rebuilding with your shop. Femi and Damola was overwhelmed by the unexpected outpour of generosity. The community they had once taken for granted is the very people who now raid around them in their own time of need. Few weeks later, with the support of the market community, Damola's kitchen rose from the ashes. Her spirit unbroken offered cooking classes to the vendors, sharing her skills. Their business boomed, not just because of the delicious food, but because of the bond they had with their neighbors and customers. One evening, as laughter filled the restaurant, Damola saw Auntie Bomi walking in with a support by a king. She rushed to embrace her and she shouted, Auntie Bomi, you are here. Auntie Bomi replied to her, of course, my dear. I wouldn't miss this for the world. And Tibomi looked around the bustling restaurant, a proud smile breezing her lips. She had witnessed Damola's transformation, not just in her own business, but in her character. Damola has learned the true meaning of success. And her aunt, Bumi, was so proud of her. Damola remembering her own struggles, kept a keen eye out for those in need. One day, she noticed a young boy wriggling by the entrance of her restaurant. His eyes glued to the delicious food. Come in, dear, Damola said to the young boy. Would you like some food? The boy shyly said, no, thank you, ma. Damola saw the hunger in his eyes, a hunger that went beyond food. She asked him to sit down and she gave him food as he devoured the meat and the meal given to him. Damola learned his name was Tolu. He had lost his parent and lived with a distant relative who often couldn't afford to feed him properly. Later, that very day, Femi and Damola discussed about Tolu's situation. Remembering that she used to prioritize appearance, neglecting those who truly needed help. She said to Femi, I want to do something for Tolu. Femi asked her, what are you thinking? I could be giving Tolu a free food every day. What do you think? Femi said, it's a good idea, my wife. Femi's heart swelling up with pride. The woman he loved, once blinded by materialism, now generous and considering others. Damola's kitchen became a beacon of hope, not just for its delicious food, but for the warmth and compassion it offered. Tolu blossomed under Damola's care learning a valuable skill and finding a sense of belonging. The fire, a symbol of destruction, had transformed into a testament to the power of community and resilience. Damola's story reminds us that true happiness doesn't come from material position. It comes from building something meaningful, surrounded by love and support. It is about learning from our mistakes using our talent to help others and finding joy in the simple things. The story of Damola and Femi serves as a powerful reminder of the dangers of materialism and the importance of love, forgiveness 
and perseverance in overcoming one's challenge. To mothers and wives, please try and have something doing for yourself, no matter how little. It will help you in times of need. Don't I do? Find something doing. Because nobody knows tomorrow. If you want more interesting stories like this that will warm to your heart and teach you life lessons, kindly subscribe to my channel. It is totally free. Bye.